are they? And your trailer full. Did you know, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, a government organization focused on gathering labor statistics in 2017 stated that about 14.5 million Americans were in unions. Miss Bradley here, for example, is one of those people. She's part of the, the teachers' union. But labor unions are no longer necessary in America. First, I will tell you about their immense political power. Second, I will tell you about how they are run like monopolies. And third, I will tell you about how they can damage industry. It is no doubt that labor unions have a lot of political power. According to an article written by Grace Carr, a graduate from G.W. Elliott School of Internal Affairs stated that in 2017, um, about $765 million were donated to politicians from labor unions most of that being to left-leaning politicians. The problem is with this is that many of the workers aren't gonna have the same political leaning as the union, and the union might try and save itself before it does the workers. And this uneasiness isn't good for either side. Second, about how they run like monopolies. According to Streck Wolfgang, a German economic sociologist in 2015 said that um, labor unions are interest associations of workers in waged employment. But yet, it, again, it is not it is not like this. Um, the unions have a lot of power, as I've stated before, and they, with their power, they decide a lot of what, of what goes on uh, to the business. Imagine this: if every car manufacturer got together and decided to um, choose prices for every car, everyone everyone would be up in arms, wanting their heads, screaming about conclusion. collusion. And um, no one seems to bat an eye, though, when labor unions do the same with workers' wages, benefits, and etc. Um, I want to the way that they are run. It reminds me a lot of the early monop the monopolies of the early 1900s, like Standard Oil. Together, it was a giant corporation that no one could touch. But once it was broken up, it was not as strong. It is almost reversed for labor unions today. But what I mean is. Labor unions are joining together so that they can keep the same influence and power um, because if they didn't, they wouldn't be as strong um, separate. Finally, about, <clears throat> about how they damage industry. According to Barry Hirsch, a uh, professor of economics at Georgetown, 1991 stated that a firm and a union engage in a long-run bilateral relationship where they both receive quasi-rents and benefits in the relationship. But yet again, like I stated before, it's not like this, and the power is extremely swayed into the favors in the union's favor. Um, I want I want you to get this image in your mind. You're in a you're in a it is July of 1942, a month after D-Day. You're in a factory making tanks, and you're in a union, and the union decides that uh, the workers aren't being paid enough, so they want the company to pay more. Well, the, the company decides they can't because they're busy with business and the war. So the union goes on strike and you can't work. So then business is unable to find workers, so they have to end up paying you more, which leads to everything costing more, which leads to everything being built. And I'm glad it didn't end up this way because this world, as, as great as it is, could be drastically different. Now that you see that labor unions are no longer necessary, uh, first, I told you about their immense political power. Second, I told you about how they act like monopolies. And third, I told you about how they can damage industry. Now, as all of us um, look to college and jobs after college, if you decide to go into a job that is unionized, I hope you see that it is no longer necessary. Words.